If you're gonna sing Meredith Andrews, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, I got a couple quick fixes that are gonna make you sing better, faster. Interested? Hey there, I'm Kim Snyder, master vocal coach, vocal repair expert, and creator of thevoiceclub.com. When they severed my vocal cord and the other time they completely destroyed my voice, I was forced to learn the hard way that almost all the advice we get about what to do with our voice has actually been disproven as not even helpful at all. So my mission is to make you a smart singer because you only get one voice. One of the most beautiful versions of a classic Christmas hymn I've heard in a long time is Meredith Andrews' version of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Long title, beautiful song. Now the quickest fix we can make to any song is to start by putting it in a sweet spot. Believe it or not, there is no such thing as a magic key you sing best in. The key you should sing any song in is completely dependent on the song itself, on the melody, on where it goes, on the dynamics sometimes that you're gonna to choose to use or that they've chosen for you to use in the song. So I've done the hard work for you. I've picked the sweet spots for the guys and the girls who might wanna lead this song. Let's start with that. All right, my fellow chick singers, if you're gonna sing this one, you're probably gonna pick the original key of D. But if you sing it through in the key of D and you go, mm, I don't like those high parts, go ahead and ask them to drop it to C. Putting yourself in the sweet spot is the best way to make you sound better and feel better about singing. Guys, if you're gonna lead this one, you're gonna probably be around the key of A in general. If you've got a lower baritone kind of voice, you might even like G as a sweet spot. Try one of those. Now the hardest part of this song is not the song itself, but the style in which you're probably going to sing it. And by you, I mean my fellow chick singers. If I could tell worship singers only one thing, it is that H, the sound H, is your voice's number one enemy because of all the beautiful things your vocal machine does when it's moving nice and smoothly and doing exactly what it's capable of doing. H is the wrench in the machine that makes it all stop or clunk its way through something. I know, I know, we've been taught breathy is beautiful and it is. As a professional session vocalist, I can tell you that I sing the breathy thing all the time, but there is a right way to sing breathy in a way that it will not compromise your vocal stability or your vocal strength. And then there's the traditional way of singing breathy, which when it becomes a habit, not only will destabilize your notes and will make moving through your range and accessing your power really, really difficult, but if used over a long time, actually unplugs you from all the sweet, good potential that your voice has. You will never discover what your voice is capable of doing if you sing everything breathy. And it is a really hard habit to break. So I'm gonna give you some delicious quick tips to unhook from traditional breathy, the damaging kind, and experience a little bit more power in this song so you can see how much easier it is and what you think of the sound of your voice when it does that, okay? First, we have to look at what the hardest parts of this song is going to be. And in the pre-chorus is gonna be a weakness watch area. A weakness watch means that H that you've been using so much is gonna to try to bully its way in. But if you wanna hear what your voice can really do, we need to keep it at bay. The pre-chorus goes, Israel strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Now, if I put H in front of all of those, listen to what it does. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. See how it kind of just unhinges everything and it kind of goes wonky for a while. For some of you, it's going to be even worse. The same thing happens in the second pre-chorus. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts, O God. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. If we drive it with H, here's what we get. By thine own eternal spirit. Probably going to be a catch breath in there. Rule in all our hearts. That'll get hard as we go up. By thine all-sufficient merit, 
going to run out of breath. And this is why we chop all of our contemporary sentences into two or three parts. Everybody's running out of breath. They're running out of breath because they don't have vocal stability. They don't have vocal stability because we are unlatching it by driving with H. Praise us to thy glorious throne is going to be weaker than it can be. You would be amazed how much vocal power you have under there if you can get that H out of the way. Now, I'm not saying this needs to be some screaming, powerful song. It's lovely lilting. And if you listen to Meredith do it, she's got a beautiful combination of doing H the right way, the breathy thing, but she's also got clear power through the entire thing. In the future, I'll do a video on how to do breathy the right way. It is a process. Not because it's hard to do it the right way, but because it's so hard to unlearn doing it the wrong way. But for now, the thing you need to tuck away in your brain is that H undermines all good vocal things. H is not a styling tool. Breathy is. Breathy has to be done differently. If you're like 95% of all women who sing worship music and 50 to 60% of guys, the quick fixes I'm going to give you are going to allow you to put much more stability into this song. It's not going to make you a super power singer, but it is going to make this much more reliable and you'll feel like you're in control of it much more. But before we get there, there's two more sections I want you to look out for. I'm giving you a thin ice warning on the first part of the bridge. And the thin ice warning is again for you breathy singers because it is 95% of you. It's not your fault you have these problems. Breathy is a beautiful styling tool. It is used by professionals the right way in a very effective way. But even most label artists have never learned to do breathy the right way. I can tell you that in the studio, what they do is they sing it the breathy way and then they go back and they'll sing it a power way. And the producer is mixing them all together to make it sound like they can do both. Unfortunately, most recording artists are doing it that way. So when you hear the recording and you think or someone tells you just sing it like the recording, what they're asking you to do is something that the original artist couldn't even do. Food for thought. I'm going to give you quick fixes for every single one of these lines. Now, if you follow Meredith Andrews' original version of this song when it comes to the chorus, you're going to notice that she takes a harmony and a strong male lead comes up and takes the main. There's a good reason for that. It's called hiding a vocal problem, but we don't have time to get into all that. you got a song to sing. So I'm going to give you two options on this. If you have a lady leading this song and you do not have a strong male to take the lead part on this part of the song, the option is to put this entire song in the key of A. That's going to allow your female lead to be able to sing the melody on this part without having to sing the harmony and leaving the melody up to somebody who maybe can't carry it over the female lead. But should you decide to do it like it is on the recording, I got some help for you there too. Might want to make some notes. Are you ready? The best way to make use of these quick tips is for you to literally print out your lyric sheet. Go ahead and sing the song in the key that we've talked about in the beginning that you've chosen. And go ahead and circle what are the most difficult parts for you. Then when we get to the quick tips, write down the changes that I make for you. I'll explain what they do, why they're doing it, and how you're going to test to make sure they're successful. Let's go through them for now and then come back and watch it later once you've got your lyrics. First, let's fix that breathy undermining H problem because it's an oxymoron to sing Israel's strength when you're wimping out and going ah, H. Okay, one of the most important things you should know about how your voice works is that it's not about the vocal cords. It's not about the vocal folds. It's all about the vocal muscle because none of the rest of it does anything unless the vocal muscle moves. Any different than when you move your bicep and tricep, it moves the skin on your arms. The skin on your arms is flexing. It is doing other things. It's doing that in response to the muscle movement. If we don't have good conditioning of our vocal muscle, if it's not coordinated, if it's not flexible, then none of the rest of it matters. And while H requires the vocal muscle to either way back off or completely disconnect all together, percussive sounds allow it to dig in, press in, and do its beautiful work. So I'm going to give you some very percussive things to do. You'll notice in my notes that I have some letters that are bolded and underlined. These are the ones that you're going to dig into. In other words, Israel has now just become Ezra, right? But it's not just Ezra, it's eh, eh, Ezra, okay? What percentage of the time would you say you sing breathy? Is it 50% of the time? Is it 90% of the time? Where would you say it's at? The higher it is on that percentage scale, 
the more you're going to have to focus on making these underlying bolded ones much more percussive. It's probably going to feel extremely percussive to you, but it is not going to sound like that to everyone else. But it's going to be a different feeling for your voice to get used to. So instead of his real strength and consolation, we're going to go eh, eh, eh. Israel's strength and consolation. Either pause the video and try this right now, or when you come back, try it then. Go ahead and sing it and drive your H all you want. And I want you to feel how stable those notes feel, how powerful they do or don't feel, how long they feel you could hold them out reasonably. And then go back and do it the percussive way and feel the difference. What we think about singing that's wrong will actually stop our physical voice from doing it. But what we feel in our voice, when we can feel the difference between what's not working and what does, is the quickest way to reprogram the neurology of our singing database. Stop and say, how does it feel when I do this? How does it feel when I do that? Get familiar with how your voice feels. It is the most important information you need to unlock your vocal potential. Same thing on the second line. Instead of hope of all the earth. You see how I put the little H in those little parentheses? We put him in H jail. That's what that is. That means that H, you know H starts the word hope, but literally you could sing the word hope without the letter H. People will hear the H because they know it's the word hope, and you could get the vocal stamina out of it that the uh, uh, O oh gives you. Up of all the earth, O oh art. If you sing breathy 60% or more of the time, I would really suggest you practice this without the H at all. Oh, above all, uh, uh. Because we need to develop the muscle strength to dig into those percussives. And if you sing breathy a lot, it has caused a weakness in the vocal muscle that needs to be rebuilt. Now, when it comes right before rehearsal, right before you sing it in the run through with the band, that's when you're going to allow a teeny tiny itty bitty H in there because it'll make you feel like, oh, I'm singing the word hope and no one will think I'm going open and, and things we worry about that really, I've sung it both ways in front of large crowds. Nobody can tell the difference. Hope of all becomes hope with a little creaky, creaky, creaky. Okay. Easier to start with hope than to go right to the creek because that's probably just not a habit you've developed yet. And these are quick fixes. Dear desire of every nation. If you dig into the E and the O, like I've just showed you, that third line is no changes on it because it ain't gonna need nothing, okay? But that last one might give you a little trouble. So let's look at that. Remember, joy is not J-H-O-Y and every is not H-E. It's J, joy, joy of every. We're going to dig into the I and we're going to narrow that to give you a little less restriction from some of those other bad habits that want to come in and squash it and make it breathy, beautiful, but gutless. Okay. It's a little scary when you sing breathy a lot to hear your voice being really strong and powerful. And you're like, hmm, but I wanted that styling thing of breathy. All right, just hang with me. Watch all my videos. I'm going to teach you to do breathy the right way, okay? But right now, we want to get you stability in this song. We want you to have choices as a singer. And this is going to help you get there. All right, same section. We need to do the same thing. And here's how it's going to look. By thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts, O Lord. B is easy, right? B, B, B. R, 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 mm, not so much. So for our R, I want you to think of revving the motor. Ruling all our hearts, O oh Lord. You can think of it as a creak or a rev, whichever. That's the sound you want. When you start making this sound at the beginning, part of your brain is going to go, that's ugly. I'm not going to do it. I want to be beautiful and breathy. But if you keep doing it and developing the habit, you'll realize it can be done in a lovely, very beautiful, expressive way that uh, most modern music uses a lot. You just got to get over the hump of it feeling different and sounding a little awkward in the beginning. By thine own sufficient merit. Here comes another R. Raise us to thy glorious throne. I've also narrowed this for you because it makes it simpler for the anatomy to make that nice row, little round sound, okay? If we're going raise, it wants to let go of that R 
to go to that vowel. We do not sing on vowels, no matter what they've told us for hundreds of thousands of years. We have science that proves otherwise. The muscle goes to work on percussive sounds. Vowels just carry it on. That's all they do. All right, let's take a look at the thin ice and what we're gonna do to get off of it. Remember, everywhere that's bold and underlined, I want you to make it as percussive as humanly possible. Don't just sing it, say it first. Yeah, yeah, you. Does it sound like that when you say, you draw the hearts of shepherds? No, it doesn't. So sing it like you say it. The easiest way is to say it as big as you can. Yeah, yeah, you. Instantly sing it. You draw the hearts of shepherds. You can hear, you can feel if they are similar or if they are not and how to get them closer. Same thing with the next one. Yeah, yeah. You draw the hearts of kings. Say it, sing it immediately. That's the best way to retrain your brain. Eh, eh, even, even, even as a baby. And if you sing it too strong in the beginning, it's okay. We're learning, we're retraining our brain. Have yourself some grace. And we gotta do that for the rest of it too. Yeah, yeah, you, you call me to your kingdom. Now we have a before. Before is a little bit more difficult of a word because boo and the f. And those are kind of like wimpy cousins of H. They're like, oh, H, where are you? Come back. We don't need that. We don't want him to come back. We just worked really hard to get him uninvited to the party. So we're going to minimize the b on before. And we're going to maximize the power in this word, which is the O. Or, or, or. Before. We want to get off the F as soon as possible. Before your lips could speak. We're going to press in on the O. Before your lips could speak. If you need to take the F out in the beginning, before your lips could speak. This one's a little tricky. It's easier to learn if you take the F out while you're practicing. Get used to how that feels and how that sounds. Once that is pretty, yeah, that's the way it's done. Sneak a little F in there and you'll see that it all wants to fall apart and then you go back and you go back and forth and back and forth before you let a little F in there and it doesn't totally blow your O away. It's a quick fix. That's all we can do right now. And eh, eh, even as a baby, you were reaching out for me. I want you to listen for this because there's magic that happens when we give our vocal muscles what they need to do what they're already built to do. Once we give that eh, eh, we notice we can carry that line on. We don't need to stop for a breath. It doesn't get weak where it usually does. And then all of a sudden you're like, I want to hold notes out because I can. And it's like standing at the front of the Titanic. I'm not joking. I've had so many singers say this. It's not just me because all of a sudden, all of this power is just underneath you. And it is there now, and it's waiting for you. It's just that the things you're doing are kind of putting the kibosh on it. All right, let's get to this chorus. Some difficult parts to fix. Now, if you're a lady leading this, and you're gonna sing that lower harmony in this part, just like the original recording, these fixes still apply. If you're going to go ahead and put this song in the key of A, and you're gonna sing this chorus, the lead line, instead of the harmony, they become even more important, okay? Wherever you don't like the way it feels or sounds in the song is where you're going to apply these fixes. So first I'm gonna sing the original key version where in the chorus, she sings the harmony. Come thou long expected Jesus. Usually we wanna put an H in there or we will power it through and it will get really strainy and a little bit more um, uncomfortable, let's say. We can fix that. Come thou long ick, 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 ick. If you got an H problem, the higher your percentage was of singing breathy, the more you need to make sure this gets a sticky eye. Expected Jesus born. B is actually where we're gonna dig in on this one. Finding places to dig, just like finding places to narrow, are not magic in and of themselves, but it's where we use them, how we use them, if we know what we're doing with them, and we know what to expect from them and can prove they did it. In this case, I've done all that hard work for you. It's b b born, really percussive. Born to set thy people free from our fears and sin. If you lose it there, it's because your nemesis H just invited himself to the party. Let him go. Show him the door. From our fears and sins, release us. This is another good case that if that little creaky sound is difficult to make, and the more we sing breathy, the more difficult and foreign that habit is, go ahead and take the S out. From our fears and sins, replace us. Most important thing is that you feel what the power is like when the vocal muscle does what it needs to do. 
Once that is pretty consistent, you feel that, you know what to expect from it, go ahead and throw a little S in there just to make the rest of your head happy. The hardest part of this entire section is the next word. Let us find our rest in thee. Because even if we don't naturally go H-E, it wants to go soft because it's got a nice little lilty now. Let us find our rest in thee. Now, if you sing it in some breathy way and soft and it's lovely and you like the sound of it, you take it. But if it's falling apart or you don't like the way it sounds, go ahead and try this. We're going to dig into the L, but he's a slippery little fella. So it's that little creaky thing. You can creak into it. You can slide into it, whichever is most comfortable. That still works, right? Let us find our rest in thee. I always choose the ugliest way to get there first. And here's why. The ugliest way when you're working on stuff on your own, obviously, not when you're performance time. When you're working on your own, the ugliest way to get to muscle growth is the quickest example for your brain to say, this is what the power that I have sounds like. Now we're just going to pretty it up. So don't go for the nicest sounding way. If I give you two options and you try them both, you go, well, this one sounds more pleasant. I'm going to try that. Okay, that's slower growth. You can choose it. That's fine if you like slow. But if you want to grow fast, pick the ugly one and ignore the ugly part of it. Listen to the power part of it. You can pretty up power any one of a hundred ways, but you cannot make pretty more powerful if you don't have power. And the last line, come thou long expected king. C, C, C is the same sound, but trust me, if your brain thinks K, it's going to dig in a lot more. Come thou long, go ahead and hit it on the head like it's an announcement. Come thou long expected king. The more you dig into that K, sound, the more power you're going to have on that last line. And that's the line you want the most power on. The more often and the more percussively you practice that k, 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 the more power you're going to have to belt out that last line and make it a ring dinger. All right, throughout this quick fix video, I've given you several different ideas of how you prove this is true in your own voice. But in short, it's going to consistently feel easier. And in the case of our moving breathy the wrong way, what you're going to feel is more power. Sometimes there's going to be some ugly stuff that shows up when your power wakes up. It's okay. Just know your power's just going, oh, I've been here for so long. Thank you for coming and recognizing me. Right? We can pretty up power 100 ways from Sunday. Okay? But we cannot make anything more powerful if power doesn't exist. So welcome that feeling underneath. Try these quick fixes wherever you're singing this song and you're not completely happy with the way it sounds. And let me know how it works. Now, after you're practicing this a few times and you're like, this is so much easier, every once in a while, one of those suckers, a couple of those places are going to turn bad on you again. That's just because your bad habits have been there longer than the quick fixes we just put in. So I want you to look for this. Sing the parts where they went awry or they feel the way you don't want them to feel and look in the mirror, look for these two things. Is your chin going up? Is your mouth going wide? Again, nothing magic about either of those two things or even fixing those two things. But those are the two most obvious signs that you are engaging the non-singing anatomy. And when we do that in singing, usually it gets in the way of our singing anatomy. And I mean literally, physically. We can watch other muscles strangle the vocal anatomy to the point where the vocal muscles cannot do their job. So we want to get those habits out of the way. If you notice that your pain, your strain, or your uncomfortability is happening and your chin is going up, then make sure you just nod down on that place. Wherever that high note is, is where your chin is going up. Don't follow the bouncing ball. Do the opposite. Come along, expected king. Down. Nod down to the side. Do not let it go up because that's causing a problem in that particular point. Same thing. If you notice that maybe your chin's going up, you're, sometimes it's both. But if you just notice your mouth is really over singing that, that's these muscles trying to do what these muscles are supposed to be doing. Let them off the hook. They don't need to be doing it, right? Look at the phonetic narrowing I gave you. Sing it like that. Have that picture in your head. On these stubborn ones, write those phonetic changes on your rehearsal sheet so that you're visually reminding your brain that's what the goal is. And that will help to kind of bring those back to where it needs to be. Again, they're quick fixes. Can we fix it permanently? Yes, we can. And you would be shocked what's underneath the hood if we just get rid of some of these things. 
But this is just step one in making you a smarter singer, a singer who knows about their voice, not just things people say, but the actual current proven science of what the voice needs and does not need to get in the way to be able to sing well. Also, to be able to question everything, whether it comes from me or anybody else, because most of the stuff out there is questionable. And most importantly, to never ever take a vocal tip from me or anyone else unless they give you a way to prove it's true and it makes sense with the current known science of what the voice really needs to do its best. That's what makes a smart singer. Why do you need to be one? Because unlike musicians, you only get one voice. And let me tell you, nobody cares about it the way you should. Don't forget to catch all the other videos and let me help you become a smarter singer. Uh, but for now, you've got rehearsing to do. So get out there and sing.